Okay, so uh, this is the final week of our teaching series uh, on why I am not a Christian, which I think is our first slide. So we're going to be um, this morning summarizing some of the things that we have learnt uh, during, uh, oh, I don't know, but almost three months, I think it is, and we'll be moving on to um, a Bible passage and one thing which maybe we can all think about as to how we go forwards from here. Now, I'm, I want this to be quite visual, so I will need um, some help. Um, and I think Callum would be a great person. And, and, and if Phoenix is around, he's gone to the toilet on cue. Um, so I don't know, would you like to help Fee and Hope? Now, I'm going to show you what, what to do. I, I, we, actually, we, we might need even more help than that. But, um, okay. Now, I've got here... <clears throat> okay, a whole load of boxes. And we need to make these boxes up, but we're not going to put tape around them. We're just going to kind of um, just build them up. Okay, you, it, it works. I tried it in my garage. Um, so what we need to do is to build these boxes up into boxes, because they're not really boxes at the moment. Okay, so Callum, if you come and, and help us. Um, actually, we might need quite a bit of help so it doesn't take all morning. So, you, so, if, so basically, what we're going to do is this, all right? So box, okay, go something like that, and then turn it over. Okay, and then we're going to build all the boxes up. All right, so that's one. So maybe you can have a, a go with the others. Okay. Um, right, so whilst you're doing that, uh, Andy, do you, want to, do you want to come up and give us a hand as well? That would be great. As long as you've got your masks on, I'm sure that will be all right. Okay, and what we're going to do is we are going to build a wall. So the big boxes are going to go, so go three boxes on the bottom, three boxes on the middle, three boxes on the top. Okay, um, that's it. And once you've done it, that's it. I'm just <laughs> got it. That's it. Well done. That's it. that's how you do it. All right, so we'll put three boxes on the bottom. That's, that's the old box. We'll put that one on the top that might collapse. Nice one. If, or you can just turn it upside down if you want so that the bottom is on the bottom and then we can just, that's it, just pop that. Just pop that. that that's it, nearly there. Just like that. Just like that, and just do that, that like that. Okay, and then we can put another one on top of there. That's it, put that one on top of there. Ooh. There, nice. Okay. Cool. Okay, if we can put those two on top of here. <laughs> oh, <laughs> got life of their own, haven't they? That's it. Pop that one on top of there, and that one on top of there. Wonderful. If you can just hold on, Callum, and hold them for me. Uh, actually, hold them that for me. Okay. So we have been talking um, over the last three months about the reasons why some people say they are not a Christian. Okay, and I have a few here just to remind you. So here's one I'm just not religious. Okay, so we had a talk on that. Okay, a bit of sellotape on there, if you would, and stick it on the front of one of the boxes. Yeah, that would be great. Okay, a second reason why people said 
that uh, they're not a Christian is basically, I'm not bothered. Okay, what's it got to do with me? Okay, so we, we had a talk on people who were indifferent. Okay, I'm not bothered. Okay, so if that can go on the front of another one. Another reason people said they were not Christians were the church is full of hypocrites. Do you remember that talk we had from Matt Levitt? And he basically said, well, at least Christians own up that they are. (laughs) So uh, the church is full of hypocrites, and that's why people say that they don't want to become a Christian. Yeah. Uh, Another reason was that God doesn't exist, okay? Uh, And religion is just made up, okay? Christianity is just made up. God doesn't exist, okay? So that's uh, another reason that we, we looked at. How are you doing, Callum? You're doing good? Okay, wonderful. Uh, another reason we said was, it's boring. Who said, I don't want to be a Christian because it's just all boring. Okay, and we, we looked at that, and the reason why, well, maybe it shouldn't be boring. Okay, if you can put that on another box. Okay, um, as we went along, we said that another reason people say they're not Christian is that science has disproved God and religion. Okay, so if, if, you, if you believe in science, you can't believe in God, or you can't have faith. That's what people think, okay? And that's another reason why people say that they are not a Christian. All right, am I going too fast, Callum? It's a sellotape, the end of the sellotape. Yeah, the end, it, it always happens, doesn't it? There must be a modern invention to stop this happening. I think there probably is, but there we go. That's another reason. The Bible doesn't make sense. People sometimes say, well, I'm not a Christian because the Bible doesn't make sense. And we looked at the whole story, didn't we, of creation and and Adam and Eve and um, looked at some reasons why people think that. Uh, So we obviously believe it it does make sense, but many people don't. Um, We looked at this. You don't need God to be good. Okay, a lot of people think, well, what, you know, I'm, I'm good, well, I, I don't need God, well, you know, I'm fine, I'm a nice person. And so that's their reason for not being a Christian. Okay, and finally, and this is going back to when Louise spoke, it's that whole problem of evil and suffering. So people who, who struggle with sickness, perhaps die, Okay, well, you know, if God is, is there, and is God is a God of love, why didn't he do something? So that's what people often say, and sometimes that's the reason why they will say that they are not a Christian. Okay, so how are we doing? We've almost got all the reasons on, on, on the boxes. So these boxes, okay, represent a wall. Okay, now this, these boxes, this wall is put up because, <clears throat> well, because sometimes it's Christians that erect this wall because of their behavior and their attitude. Sometimes it's the religion, what people uh, think of as the Christian religion, um, builds walls, you know. I, I, I'm not accepted, um, you know, I, they don't want me. But sometimes it's people who, who are not part of, of things, who, who, you know, who just simply build their own walls and, and, and don't explore the Christian faith and don't, um, you know, take it any further. So there are a number of reasons why these walls get built. Okay, wonderful. Thanks, Callum. Okay, we haven't finished yet. We haven't finished yet. <laughs> so the problem is, with, with a wall like this, is that... You're one side, and someone else is another. And it's really difficult, you know, I'm, I can't even see who, who is the other side of, of these boxes, let alone effectively communicate with them. So walls present problems. And the whole point of the little talk this morning is to say that somehow we need to turn the walls into bridges. Okay, and as we're called Bridge Church, that's probably a good idea to live up to our name. So, the, so I'm going to ask you the question this morning, how do we turn this wall into a bridge? Okay, so Phoenix, you went out to the loo just at the wrong time because you had to build this wall. Come, come, if you can come forward, I want you to think with your dad how you're going to turn this wall into a bridge.
Have you got any thoughts? Just wing it like a normal wing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any thoughts, Phoenix? How are you going to turn this wall into a bridge? Okay, well, it's not going to be a great bridge, but it's going to be a bridge nonetheless. So what I want you to do is to take the top row off, okay, and pop them on the floor. Okay, can you do that? Take the top row off and pop them on the floor. Okay, right. Okay, now what we need to do is we need to dismantle the middle row. Okay, so we can get them flat again. So dismantle the middle row. You can just dismantle that one. Okay, just pull it apart if you can. <clears throat> okay, now we need, are we there? Yeah, nearly there. Okay, good stuff. If we can just bring this row this way and that row just about there. Okay, cool. And then we get the boxes that we've dismantled, make them nice and flat. Okay, all right, I need to be a bit closer together. Yeah and put them like that. Yeah, and put them on the top. <clears throat> Good stuff. Okay. Now, things are a whole lot better, okay? We haven't got a wall for a start. We can talk, hello. We can talk now to the people who are just a little far away, but you seemed a long way away when there was a wall in front of you, okay? And we be can begin to perhaps even build some kind of relationship. Thanks, guys. That is really good. So that is the principle that I would love us as a church, you know, to, to adopt. And I ask the question, how can we always be building bridges to people, not building walls up in front of people? And I just want to look at a little Bible story that helps us illustrate that. Okay, and this comes from a book called Acts. And it all starts with, and I think this is the next slide. We've got another slide. Um, it all starts with a guy called Cornelius. Okay, Jono, would you mind just uh, reading that for us? A Caesarea. There was a man named Cornelius, a centurion, in what was known as the Italian Regiment. He and all his family were devout and God-fearing. He gave generously to those in need and prayed to God regularly. Okay, so Cornelius was a, a very important person. He was a centurion. He was in charge of a hundred men, a hundred soldiers. And, and Cornelius wasn't, and this is key, he wasn't... A, a Jew, okay? He, he feared God, he believed in God, but he wasn't a Jew. Now, he was getting on with his life quite normally when suddenly he was met by a, a kind of a vision. He, an angel came and spoke to him and said, you need to send some men to go and find a man named Peter who is staying in a town called Joppa. Now today, Joppa is called Jaffa in Israel. And you know what they make in Jaffa, don't you? Well, if you believe that, you'll believe anything. Okay, but, so Cornelius the centurion sent some men to this place called Joppa or Jaffa to find Peter. Meanwhile, Peter was um, basically having a bit of a holiday because Jaffa is at the seaside. So he was there getting a suntan. It says that he was waiting for a meal to be prepared, you know, on, on the roof, because okay, that's, that's where they, you know, were. They were flat roofs, not sloped. And he, he, he was there, and Peter also had a vision. And this vision was bizarre. Absolutely 
bizarre. Okay, so this vision, imagine it, was of a huge sheet, a huge bed sheet. And in the bed sheet, as it came down from heaven, were lots of animals. Okay, and these animals were the very animals that as a Jew, so Peter was a Jew, Cornelius wasn't, but Peter was, he was a devout Jew, in this sheet were all the animals that were not kosher, that you weren't allowed to eat or touch. And a voice came and said to Peter, Then a voice told him, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. Surely not, Lord, Peter replied. I have never eaten anything impure or unclean. So this vision is offensive. It's like me or you going up to a Jew today and handing them some bacon. Seriously, it's as offensive as that. Because he, Peter is being told to break God's law, to eat things which he has been told never to eat. And so he resists. But this happens not just once, but three times. And Peter is really confused. So as he's there in a state of confusion, guess who comes along? The men sent from Cornelius. And they find Peter and say to him, even though they didn't know him, come with us. You've got to come with us to meet Cornelius. Now, Peter was on holiday. He didn't, he didn't really want to do this. But, but because of everything that was going on, that's what he did. So he went to Cornelius's house. And when he got to Cornelius's house, Cornelius said to him something which was quite profound. Now, we might not get it, but it was very profound to him, and it was, come in. <laughs> come in. Because Peter, as a Jew, wanting to remain <clears throat> very clean, not contaminated by people like the non-Jews, who would always disobey God's law and be unclean and not be people to associate with and not to touch and all that sort of thing. He was being invited in, an act of hospitality, by people who he was really told not to associate with. But Cornelius said, come in. And Peter went in the house. Okay, so the next um, Bible passage simply says... While talking with him, Peter went inside and found a large gathering of people. He said to them, You are well aware that it is against our law for a Jew to associate with or visit a Gentile. But God has shown me that I should not call anyone impure or unclean. So Peter went inside and began to mix and mingle with these people who were not Jews. And it would have been... Uh, a time for him where he would have known that he, under the old way, would have become actually very dirty and God would have been unhappy with him. But because of the new thing that was going on, because of this vision that he'd seen, the sheet that had come down from heaven, because what that angel had told him that, mm, you know, you can do things like this. Peter was willing to go in the house, receive the offer of hospitality, and mix and mingle and eat and touch these kind of people. And as Peter got up to speak, and he, he actually told the story of Jesus, as, as Peter got up to speak, God did something amazing, and God sent his Holy Spirit, who came upon everyone in the room, and Peter ended up baptizing all these people who were not Jews, which caused a stir, because suddenly those people who were not Jews were now part of the whole thing that God was doing. So here's the point I really want to make this morning. In order to build bridges, and that is what Peter and Cornelius was doing, because up until that point, a huge wall called the Jewish religion was in the way of God bringing everyone into his purposes. Peter was breaking down the wall of the Jewish religion and building relationships, building bridges, meeting people who he had never met before and was willing to go places and do things that made him feel uncomfortable 
but which resulted in these relationships being built. And it all happened in a home. And as we go forward into the autumn, I believe God wants us to use our homes to build relationships, to break down walls and to build relationships. Yes, he wants to use this building too, but he wants us to use our homes to build relationships with people who at the moment think the only thing that is built up is walls. By breaking down walls, we can build bridges. But to build bridges, we have to build relationships. And a good way of doing that is by using our homes, by inviting people to things which we might not invite them to normally. Sometimes we have a a little group of friends, we just invite them. What about inviting people who we don't normally invite things to, people think to things to? So here's the challenge for us as we go forwards. Yes, we've learnt why people are not a Christian, but what are we going to do about it? How do we build relationships with people so that those walls no longer exist?